Now, in another example, look at how much differently they treat you and I. Look at the contempt that they have for the common citizens. In New York City today, the feds are exposing subway riders to a chemical gas, and they admit ignorance to health effects. The New York City Metropolitan Transit Authority supposedly released a notice to subway passengers not only thanking them for being gassed lab rats, but also admitting that they weren't fully aware of what the gas exposure health effects would be. Now, this is from a flyer that was reported to be from the MTA. We find out later that it really wasn't. But listen to this. It's actually more frank and more honest than what the MTA and the New York Police Department put out. And we're going to talk about how these two basically uh, compare to each other. This one is very truthful. And we'll contrast that with what the New York Police Department and the Metropolitan Transit Authority put out. Now, in the false flyer, what it said was, thank you for writing the MTA. They don't thank anybody in their, original, in their press release. At this time, we would like to thank you for participating in a joint study conducted by the New York Police Department and Brookhaven National Laboratory, sponsored by the Department of Defense. We still do not fully understand the health effects of perfluorocarbon gas exposure, though exposure to perfluorocarbons are linked to the early onset of menopause. Studies in animals have found these gases significant, significantly alter liver and thyroid function, increase the risk for tumors, and cause failure in reproductive organs. These gases are being dispersed as a test for your protection against unwarranted chemical attacks. Now, that's true. Every bit of that is true. And it is also, you can find that on the internet. You can see that the effects of perfluorocarbons are exactly that. They cause fertility problems, they cause the early onset of menopause, and they cause an increase of tumors and cancer. But you won't find that information in the official release from the government. Instead, what they have is a study, uh, it's called the S-SAFE study, or I guess it's kind of a safe study. It's kind of a stuttering there because they, <laughs> they know that it's not true. And they're talking about in their press release, they're proud of the fact that they got $3.4 million from the Department of Homeland Defense. And they tell you that these are harmless tracer gases that they're detecting being sprayed out. Now, put this in perspective. We're told that we need to go to war against Syria because the Syrian government released gases on its citizens. And Russia today has put forth some evidence that says that those gases that were released were actually released by the rebels that the U.S. government is supporting. But the U.S. government itself can release gases that cause early onset of menopause, cause infertility, and cause tumors, and yet there's no problem with that. That's the double standard that we're looking at. And it's very similar to what we saw happen last fall with the EPA. The EPA conducted illegal human experimentation, and that's what this is. This is illegal human experimentation. They're exposing to people to gases that they know are harmful, and yet doing it anyway. The only difference is, is that at least when the EPA was doing it, they were monitoring the people to see what happened. They're just exposing in New York millions of people during the day. They could very easily, if they wanted to test the gases, they could use something that is not harmful. They could also do it at a time when there's not a lot of people there, but they choose to do it at rush hour so they can expose the most number of people. Criminal actions. Same thing we saw from the EPA. And when the EPA did this, they were exposing people, if you remember, to particulate matter that they had said that the administrator of the EPA, Lisa Jackson, had said was fatal. She emphasized that it wasn't a level that was going to make people sick. It was a level that would kill them. Now, fortunately, she was lying about that, but they were looking for people with respiratory and cardiac problems so these people would have an event and they could justify regulations that were more strict than the ones that they had. The problem was that they were exposing people to 70 times, in some cases, the level that the EPA had said was unsafe, just trying to get more strict regulations. Now, why is the Department of Defense and the New York Police Department doing this in New York City? We don't know. Supposedly, it's for your safety. Everything that they do to us, supposedly, is for our safety. Now, the April flyer that was put out mentioned that these were perfluorocarbons. Uh, this is uh, from the April flyer. It said that they will support Brookhaven. They were talking about how in three months, in July, they were going to do this. They will support Brookhaven scientists tracking the movement of harmless tracer gases. But then they identify these quote-unquote harmless gases as perfluorocarbon tracer gases. 
They said they present no health or environmental hazard. They are non-toxic, inert, odorless, invisible, and have been used in airflow studies since the 1980s. Except that if you look at other government sites, you will see that they have the effects that we were talking about, about infertility and that sort of thing. Now, for more information about what our government is doing in terms of eugenics and sterilization, here's a report from Gigi Arnetta. The U.S. government has been busy denying their big brother behavior in our daily lives, but they can't deny their involvement in eugenics. Here's the latest. A new and investigative report shows that nearly 150 females were sterilized between 2006 and 2010 by doctors under contract with the California Department of Corrections. One prisoner who worked in the infirmary overheard medical staff encouraging multiple offenders to be sterilized. Although federal and state laws ban prisoner sterilizations with federal monies, California used state funds. The San Francisco Gate shows a map of California's role similar to the Nazis goal of purification and the state's contribution to eugenics. California was the second state to pass eugenics laws in 1909, two years after Indiana made it legal to sterilize the feeble-minded. According to the University of Virginia bioethicist Paul Lombardo, Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger opened the first birth control clinic in 1916 and in 1934 she was quoted saying, America needs a code for babies. The purpose of the American Baby Code should be to provide for a better distribution of babies, to assist couples who wish to prevent overproduction of offspring, and thus to reduce the burden of charity and taxation for the public relief, and to protect society against the propagation and increase of the unfit. More quotes from Margaret Sanger. The most merciful thing that a family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. Here's another one from Margaret Sanger. Birth control must lead ultimately to a cleaner race. Moving forward, presidential frontrunner for 2016 Hillary Clinton was awarded the Margaret Sanger Award in March of 2009 and claimed to be in awe of her. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. I am really in awe of her. All this is just more evidence that our government likes to play God. Not only are they sterilizing human beings, but now they've moved on to our pets. The U.S. government is scheduled to start testing a new vaccine to sterilize dogs. The government vaccine, Gona Khan, is scheduled to be tested in September on two Indian reservations. In the Gona Khan tests, dogs will be caught, microchipped, tattooed, collared, injected, and released, says spay and neuter expert Ruth Steinberger. Their idea is to control the dog population. Population control? What happened to our government just governing? Secure your copy of the new DVD, State of Mind, today at InfoWarsShop.com. You can get it on Blu-ray or DVD at InfoWarsShop.com. I'm Gigi Arnetta with your InfoWars Nightly News Alert. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now we'll remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid.